Geothermal energy options, providing oil-free energy solutions. Before the drilling begins, we map out the well field. The first hole is plotted as close to the mechanical room as possible. Additional wells are drilled 15 to 20 feet apart from each other. There is one well drilled per ton of geothermal. Each well is drilled vertically to a depth of 100 feet. Each borehole is 4 inches in diameter. In poor soil conditions, we can add up to 50 feet of length to each ground loop, which increases system performance. We can also boost the performance of any system by adding an additional well to each geothermal unit installed. Most wells hit rock after 25 feet, and water is usually encountered below 50 feet. This adds up to better conductivity in the ground. The copper line sets we use are made by us in our fabrication facility. Each line set is pressurized and tested when they are made and before they go into the ground. Each crown loop is made with 1 3 8 and 1 half inch copper line. These are laid out on site and attached to PVC tubing to be inserted into the well. Each hole is then filled with a thermally conductive grout. One bag of grout is mixed with five bags of sand. The grout enhances conductivity between the copper and the ground. The grout is distributed evenly throughout the well. This ensures a proper seal with the ground. After the wells are grouted, we check the pressure in each line again to be sure there are no leaks. After all of the wells are completed, we triangulate each wellhead. This gives us an accurate map should a well ever need to be located in the future. Once the well field is complete, we begin the excavation. The trenches are dug 5 feet down and 2 feet wide. This ensures that the copper ground loops are below the frost line and within the constant temperature of the earth. The trench also allows us to run our lines individually into the house and connect them to the heat pumps inside. After the trenches are completed, we fill them with a layer of sand six inches deep. This protects the copper line sets from any materials in the ground that may cause damage once we are ready to backfill. Each line set is cut and brazed to a piece of insulated copper and run to the units inside the house. Another six inch layer of sand is added for protection and then we begin filling in the trenches. For a typical geo install, the groundwork takes four or five days to complete from the start of drilling to the final grade of excavation. The project in this video was a retrofit. After final grading and reseeding, the lawn was back to normal in a month. When installing geothermal for new construction, excavation, grading, and reseeding are not a concern. The copper line sets that were run through the foundation are now ready to be attached to the geothermal units. Unlike other DX systems, we run each ground loop to our units individually. There is a line in and a line out for each well drilled or each ton of geothermal. Running each line separately to our units allows us to control the amount of refrigerant sent to each well. This increases system performance. The thermostats and air handlers are then wired to the control board, which acts as the brain of the system. This control board also regulates the amount of refrigerant sent to each individual ground loop. It constantly monitors and adjusts system performance. Before the units can be charged with refrigerant, they are attached to a vacuum pump. Once the vacuum in the system is below 400 microns, the units are ready to be charged. All of our heat pumps use R410A refrigerant. It is environmentally friendly and has replaced R22 as the preferred refrigerant around the world. For this particular project, we were able to achieve an air temperature of 105 degrees in heating mode. When we reversed the process for cooling, we recorded an air temperature of 40 degrees. This is what a two unit setup looks like when the install is complete. All of our geothermal systems are designed to be clean and energy efficient with a life expectancy of 20 years or more.